No. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. How are we all doing? Good, right on. Okay, let's get things started. Thank you all for coming out today. We're going to have a great meeting. Oh, and I guess we're jumping right in. Um, Austin's got somewhere to be. Um, we have a uh, book club today, immediately following class, Atomic Habits. I don't know if you guys, who's been coming to this? Enjoying? Good? Good times? I've been going to. I missed last week. I don't know if I can go this week. But it's really good. Lots of good stuff. Come and chat. Even if you have not read this book, I guarantee you will take something out of the conversation. So if you have an hour to spare, come and hang out and talk. And we had so much fun with this book club, we thought we'd do another one. That's right. Yeah. So um, 
Some of you may remember the name Andrew Anderson. He spoke with us last year, I think three different three different times. Um, I've used him to coach uh, one of my sons. And I happen to think that Andrew is uniquely um, skilled at coaching. And um, so uh, he just, just uh, put out this book and it's a bestseller already. And so I asked him if we could do a book club around it. And I'll lead it this time because I want to read the book. And I just got it. So um, right after we're done with Atomic Habits, I'm going to lead a book club on Strength of the Oak, Strength of the Willow. And this is an interesting book. I opened it up and started kind of glancing through it. And there are some actual homework assignments in it about you know, uh, understanding yourself and understanding um, some of your personality characteristics and whatnot. And so I thought, oh, this is going to be fun. So we'll do it in four weeks. So it's going to be more aggressive than Atomic Habits because I do not want to do this all summer long. <laughs> so this is going to be like you have to read 60 pages a week, I think. So um, we'll start it in June. Yeah. So the first books, we have all the books uh, ready. Yeah. So I mean, I, I have one up there. It's I think. Yeah. It'll be luck of the draw. Of which one you get? I think that one's signed. Um, you signed half of them. them. This is my own personal copy, and it is signed. And I will be. <laughs> what do you think of it? You've talked to him, right? I've talked to him, and I started his book. I haven't read the whole thing, so I'm really excited about this. Um. It's good. I mean, I would agree with you. He's very uniquely talented. He has a way of really just getting inside of you in such an unobtrusive, humble way. Like it just, it, it's fantastic. Yeah. I think I mentioned that I had a son who was interviewing for a new job and I was sort of in disagreement with him about what he should ask for in that moment where they say, what you expect, what's your expectation of what you should be paid and he's an engineer, has an engineering degree. And I said, I'm like I'm trying to convince him that he should be asking for more money. I pulled it up on my phone, average engineer pay in Portland. And he just didn't feel that. And so I actually hired Andrew to have a conversation with him. And Andrew said that was one of his strengths. And my son asked for 10,000 more than what he thought he was going to. And he got it. And I thought, wow, it's that simple, right? Just having the right mindset, having the person talk to you that in a way that that uh, gets through your brain and all your filters that you throw up that we all throw up at, um, to get through life. And so um, I did have a brief conversation about some of these things and I thought, oh God, this guy is really good. I think he's really, really good. So I'm happy to do this and I know I'm gonna learn something. So I'm going on vacation for a couple of weeks. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna read it. And then when I come back, I'll review so that, you know, we're up to date on anything we've read. We have 20 copies. So first 20, um, get a book. And yeah, we'll he's like, I, I find him like so positive and you can just tell he really means well. I think to go what you're saying, like he means well. I think you can trust him because he's a positive person and he means well. I just, yeah. I think people like that in your life are good. I get a I get a really unique vibe out of him, which yeah. I think is probably going to be. And he's lived a little life. It's going to be amazing, I think. So. And I think he's lived a little life. You know, I mean, he's yeah, he's, been, yeah. he's had ups, he's had downs, so he's got perspective. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, but yeah, so just for clarification on when it starts, so we are aiming for distributing the books by like on May twenty third. Um, we're looking to see if we can actually have them on that day. We'll let you guys know um, for that Tuesday meeting. But once that happens, we'll distribute the books. That'll be two weeks before June 6th. Uh, so you can have the books read that first quarter before June 6th, because we yeah, have June 6th. And then after that, there are four weeks before the 4th. We want to get it done before the 4th of July, because, well, the 4th of July is on a Tuesday. Now I'll kind of disrupt it. So it'll go pretty quick. So yeah. We have the books. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if people want now, so if you're interested up. in doing this, it's something you feel strongly about. We have the book. So just uh, ask, ask, ask Sydney and then she'll just make a list of who gets them. So yeah. Can, I don't know who we are. They're in Sydney's yeah. office and Sydney shares an office with Korean. Yeah. <laughs> and Andrew, Andrew, uh, this book just came out and he did say he will uh, come on our calls and talk to us about what he meant by certain things that he did. So. Should be good.
Um, this should be pretty cool. I think yeah. I feel like it's going to be a little more interactive having the actual author on the phone. So I told him maybe the first one and the end, so that we can we can maybe relate our judgments that we have about the book to him and see if it relates at all to what he intended. Mm -hmm. So, and he's excited to do it. So it should be fun. All right. How to prepare for success as a landlord after the pandemic coming tomorrow, May 10th from 11 to 12. I get asked once a week by y'all, the greater y'all, um, about, hey, I've I'm, my clients are writing a, an offer on a property that has a buyer, has a tenant in it. What should I do? And so I think if you have that question in your head or if you don't know the answer to that question, I think you should come to this class and um, prepare yourself. And guess what? What? It's getting harder. It, yeah. yeah. And the lot the, the of there's a big there's a, there's a possibility of a big law change in Portland. So it could get even more restrictive for tenants I mean for landlords in Portland. So um, it could lead to ultimately having to sell these things with the tenants in them and having no choice around it. Yeah. That's what it's looking at. Looking like scary. Yeah. 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 All right. Doing hard things. And AI with, with Rick Ray. I love Rick Ray. I love the name of this class. Habits, doing hard things, and artificial intelligence. Learning the life-changing value of doing hard things. Um, he's a big proponent of doing something hard in the morning to start things off, doing something difficult so the rest of the day is easy. Yeah, and this relates, I think this dovetails nicely into Atomic Habits because Atomic Habits talks about making small changes that lead to bigger changes. And he's talking about, and he is an Atomic Habits guy. He's actually quoted in his book. Um, he has a book also that's on the bestseller list. And uh, you want to take that? No, no. no. <laughs> I just, it wasn't that important. And uh, it's probably Kareem. She wants to talk. Yeah, probably. It's itching right now. So anyway, um, he'll talk about that. He'll talk about how to get motivated to do hard things, which is what you're going to need to do to get through this business, right? This business is like a roller coaster. There are days or years where it's really, really good. And the people come to you. And then there are days where you have to go out and hunt for them. And so, um, you know, this is a little more, we're in a transition for sure. So mm -hmm. this is going to be good timing to listen to Rick. I was talking to one of our top producers yesterday and, um, and she was, you know, she was having a hard time with something and, uh, and she's a warrior. She just grinds through things. But uh, it kind of dawned upon me. It's like once you get in this business and you you like you learn how to lead gen, you learn how to like close transactions. Like the next biggest hurdle is your ability to bounce back from all the like all the hard things that we have to deal with, because like we're not out there digging ditches. That's hard work. Right. But we do like mentally challenging stuff. We have clients that are in impossible situations that become unhappy and then they become unhappy with you and that takes a toll on you and like your ability to address and deal with that stuff has so much to do with your success i think that like it's the difference between people who you know who go out and do 15 million dollars for three years straight and all of a sudden they fall off because they just can't handle the grind of it they can't see like think clear enough through it anyway so um i was just no, that's a very good point I because just... I think this business is a mental game. And when you're in the economy where, where some of your clients are going to be selling for, you know, difficult reasons in their lives, then you're going to have to put the energy forward to get them through some of their little crises to be able to get the transactions closed, which is what the goal is. And so um, it does take yeah. mental strength. So well, that's why we're bringing in guys like Andrew and Rick. To, yeah to talk about these edges that you can implement into your business. Yeah. Anecdotally, one of, one of your, one of your fellow brokers um, had some buyers who didn't want to buy a house that had this. And so when they had their home inspection, the property had this. And so they said, remove this. And the seller said, well, we'll remove it from here. And then they agreed to it. And then after closing, they were like, wait, the house has this. We told you we didn't want this. And he's like, Oh my gosh, like you guys, you guys are killing me. And so he's been bending over backwards to try to help these people get through the problem they're having. And it just one thing turns into another thing, into another thing. And he just can't eject from this transaction fast enough. But he's out there grinding through it because he wants to get a referral from these people someday. But um, it's just, it, this business is funny sometimes. It's yeah. like no good deed goes unpunished sometimes. All right, we can move on.
Red Day. Red Day. This Thursday. This Thursday. So um, I'll probably be here. I'll meet here um, probably about 8.15 if anybody wants to like carpool out. Um, but Red Day is Thursday at um, the Rebuilding Center. If you go to our website, you can register there. I think it's too late for t-shirts. I ordered a few extra, oh. but oh. Uh, not. Okay. Um, but um, the address is there. Um, and then afterwards, we're going to go to much discussion about the name of this place. I'm going to go with Luster Pearl. Camera, what do you think? Luster? Not, Boom. Not, not Lustre. Lustre. Lester? Okay. Lester. For pizza, beer, wine, whatever afterwards. It should be a lot of fun. Um, if, who's done Red Day? Who in the room has been to Red Day before? Oh, my gosh. Jeez. Uh, Red Day is really fun. Cameron? Yes. Chris has been. It's a lot of fun, you guys. We go out and we, like, dedicate the morning to helping out a, a charity in the, in the area that feels really great. You put in some hard work. And then you get to go like have a little small little party with your friends afterwards. It's a lot of fun. If you haven't done it, I encourage you to go. It's more than just a t-shirt. It's a good time. Yeah, like I have a lot of good memories from doing it. And we're gonna have a sunny day. Yes. Which amazing. Which is crazy. Last like last year, I was out landscaping. It was raining upside down. Cameron, you were out there with me. Yeah. It was yeah, Chris, you were there. It was like soggy and wet. I was so ready to be done landscaping by the end of the day. But on what's on Thursday, it should be great. Yep, Thursday would be great. And yep. half of it's indoors. So if you want to work indoors, you can get assigned indoors. Do you have to bring gloves? As you heard, do we, do we have to bring gloves or anything? Austin I bought a pair. Bring... You can if you want to, Chris. Um, there'll be some landscaping outside and clean up that side and then clean up on the inside of the warehouse. So if you want to bring gloves. Um, it's probably a good idea. Bring gloves. I've been in there searching for things before and I so I know what to expect. So I'd bring gloves. <laughs> yeah. All right. Boom. And the office is closed, by the way. Oh, good point. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody will be here. So, okay. Uh, April 2023, year to date, top and closings, individual agents, Stacey Hardler, reclaim the spot at the top. Pam Waldman, Cricket Forsey, Rita Wolf, Linda Heinrichs. And where are the fellas? Keith. Pull your weight, guys. Keith. You have to sell something. What are you doing here? Go sell. I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then the groups and teams, you have the office of Daryl Boldo, the Fox Room, the Straight Group, the Team Schwab, Ellison uh, Team Homes, and the Clark Group. So good stuff. I think the most important thing on this page is that Team Schwab is ahead of the Ellison Team and the Clark Group. <laughs> and I think it'd be, if you see Peter in the office just say what's going on with your team because mm -hmm. you're sinking fast mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh cameron you missus dwight was thanking you for all your hard work for your third spot <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding okay next slide that's it, that's it. But, oh wait you have something i want to show something uh here i'll come grab my phone in a sec Get that real quick Okay, so I want to show something um, to everyone. It's not command related, so this will be fun. Um, who here has visited the KWPP agents website recently? I know. Actually, here's the thing. It's a new website. Uh, it's been a pet project of mine for the last couple of weeks um, to take everything and move it um, over to the new website. Like the, the old one was great. We've had it for a couple of years. It served its purpose for, you know, during COVID and having a medium to house all the things. Uh, but I can see the metrics, right? We get, I think in the last, uh, I think la like in, within a 30 day span, we get a couple thousand visits to this website, which is crazy. Um, half of it's probably me, but no, no, but in reality, like it's no, but I, I do it on the admin side. So I don't think that's the case, but like, but I can see like how big our, tra how heavy our traffic is. And when you think about having, you know, 170 agents, 180, probably if you consider like with admin and staff and stuff, um, you know, that, that sums up pretty well, like how successful the, the website's going. So we wanted to revamp it, add some more bells and whistles to it, have some, you know, future proof it a little bit more. So we changed it over to a new page. And so I want to kind of show you what that looks like. So same website as before, if you go to kdppagents.com, um, what you'll see is it's 
very similar. Um, it just took a little while to get everything up to speed and have everything moved over. Um, so like on the homepage, you're going to see the same type of office events that we had before. The issue with the last one was you could only have five events per page and you had to keep saying like more events, more events. You Heaven forbid we had a busy Wednesday and you wanted to see Thursday. You had to go multiple pages. Now the office events still pulls from our Google calendar, but it's the entire month of May. You'll be able to see every single event that's happening. Um, and so, for example, with Red Day, you'll see on Thursday, the office is closed and you can click on this and get access to all the information, including adding it to your Google Calendar. So it's it's a lot easier. Um, you can go into future months if you want to, but it's just it's going to help make things a lot nicer. And it is mobile friendly as well. So you're welcome to use this on your phone. Um, but same options up here uh, with technology. It's a little bit cleaner. You're going to see uh, all the same stuff with things like printer drivers. Uh, KW answers. Um, there are certain things that if it's under construction, it means I'm still working on it. Uh, this went, this actually, the transition went a little faster than expected on the website side of things. So I was a little blindsided, but I'm working on some of the things. Uh, but then you are also able to access everything under resources again. So policy manual logos, you'll be able to access all of them, our manuals, um, all of our logos uh, for luxury, commercial, industry, things like that just simply by clicking on that section and it's gonna download a zip file that'll get you access to all the logos right there. Um, but yeah, so feel free to take a look at it, um, You know, explore it, see if there's any feedback that you have, I'm welcome to get that feedback. Uh, but yeah, so, and then- the live stream? Yeah, so if you click live stream, I'm not gonna click it because I don't know what will happen. <laughs> I don't wanna mess up our Zoom, but th this is a link directly to our Zoom. So if at any point um, you aren't able to attend this meeting, you can click that live stream button and it will take you straight to our Zoom link. Um, and then I am, the, there's a new agent hub for any new agents that are joining us, as well as a commercial hub that is up and running. And I'm working on a luxury hub uh, so that luxury agents have resources straight from this website. Um, and yeah, it, and if you were to visit it right now, you will see a pop-up. I already visited it today, so it's not gonna show up a second time, um, but I think it is Rick Gray pop-up, I wanna say. Um, so if you wanna go to Rick Gray tomorrow, the, the pop-up will show and then you can register for it. And what's really nice about this is a lot of our registration events and things like that have been through a third party like Eventbrite. Um, but now with this website, we can have all of our signups and things like that through the website. So you don't have to go to another third party website, all that stuff. Um, and we're going to add more bells and whistles like that um, as we learn it and as we add more. It'll be really cool. So explore it. Let me know what you think. That is it for that. That's awesome. Oh, there you go. Good Super work. Good, good job. You. Good job. Yeah. Um, I think that's it on my part. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Looking for... No, Ramona. <laughs> yes. So um, I had this bright idea. You're welcome, Ramona. Um, after yesterday's meeting, we we're talking about um, about our commercial referrals and how we as residential agents may not know enough, speak enough commercial to convert a referral or to feel confident in promoting our commercial division. So it was like, hey, let's have Ramona in to talk about how to convert commercial referrals. And lo and behold, you have like, you have like all the resources in the world for it. So you mean you're even paring it down a little bit today just to make it fit our meeting, which is awesome. So Ramona, I'm gonna hand it over to you okay, and let you do great. your thing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah, I missed the first part. So um I was at the um, PSU Center for Real Estate Breakfast. It's fascinating, really positive information from the forecaster that they had. Yeah, so um, more on that. They'll send out slides and stuff. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, awesome. so great. So um, um, commercial real estate, um, what to know about it. I, I have taught this class a couple of times to agents out in the marketplace with um, ones that I know. So it's it was 11 things to know about commercial real estate. <laughs> I was trying to pair out the slides so that the numbers, so... Um, anyway, we'll see how they flow, but we're going to have Keith Jordan and Cameron, who I just saw, um, also join me in this presentation just so that we could answer some of your questions and we want to pick their brain too, as far as, you know, some of the slides were pertaining to like, you know, well, what do you, what do you say, you know, on the residential side, I think, I think that's the biggest thing that you yeah. hear and, and also, I know is working as de designated broker for a number of years, managing broker, 
and and I do a lot of classes out in the community. Agents, specifically when I stepped into this role, like agents who had been in the business for a long time, came to me and they said, "Oh my gosh, I'm so excited because I don't, I don't know when my client says that they have a building they want to sell or purchase, I don't even know what questions to follow up with. Like, how do I know? Mm -hmm. And one agent I met with specifically, she lost a, she lost the transaction because she was just, you know, she just smiled and said, oh, that sounds interesting. And didn't know what to follow up with even so that she can make the introduction between the agent and, I mean, the client yeah. and, and a commercial. And, and I think so, like what, what's important about that is like, if, if your client's coming to you and saying, hey, I've got a building to sell, would you, would you know someone who could help me out or would you be able to help me out? Well, first you probably don't want to help them out because it's completely different than what you do every day. <clears throat> but but like, if you can't talk about it just a little bit, why would they take your referral? You know, like you need to know a little something so that your handoff comes with some credibility. Yeah, and confidence. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, having the confidence. And then and then on the flip side of that is having the confidence to pick up the phone and call the commercial agent on the other. And that's another thing that we've been hearing <laughs> is that they don't even know what to say to the commercial agent. And so we're going to talk to a couple of our commercial agents and find out like how they uncover opportunities so that you know that um, you can do the same thing and then how to have that conversation when you refer business. So Keith, um, Keith Jordan and Cameron, if you want to come up. Tell us. And um, I think they were the two guys. Where's the sign saying that you're here? So I want to I want to say somebody Jack. somebody yeah, Jack recently, too. one of the residential agents said, "Oh, it sounds like you really want us to refer." business in instead of try to help us do the business ourselves, And, and the answer to that is yes. And the reason why is that we, it's not that we don't feel that you can't do commercial. If that's an interest of yours, let's talk because there's training programs and there's, you know, tools and things that are available to you, but we want you making the most amount of money for the least amount of time within the lane that you walk in and partner with our commercial agents who can help facilitate the transactions that you're you're not experts in because there's a lot of nuances and they can take a very long time to close and like you were just telling me yesterday that one was fell on like you worked on a long time and it fell you know things happen so anyway so um my slides what to know about commercial real estate now you guys haven't seen this so there's going to be a little we're going to follow this together but you'll know and and insert you know we'll have questions as we go so it's and very is fine. yeah it's kind of like, it's almost like you know I don't know what is that like old dating show like welcome and we're gonna ask <laughs> questions you know from the residential side to the okay so next slide okay what's commercial real estate like like when you hear that do you even know what commercial real estate means so I googled it to see what you know because everything's googleable um commercial real estate agent um industry professional whose job it is to assist in the lease and management or sales of property and to advise clients are the best course of action with deciding how to invest or improve real property for a commercial asset. Would you guys agree with that? Oh, yeah. yes. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I'm sure that is that chat GPT or no. <laughs> <laughs> old fashioned Google. Old fashioned Google. Google. Two yeah. Ones right out of my mouth. Yeah. No. Yeah. See, I have some of the slides are going to be numbered because there was 11 points. But um, so, yeah, no, that was Google from some um, white paper. I, I try to go to Google and, you know, like go over, but um, these are the different segments of commercial real estate. So there's industrial, office, multifamily, land acquisition and development, which that's that was over years, that was my background, um, business brokerage, government services, retail, hospitality. Am I missing anything on that? Um, well, there's a there's kind of a subcategory of industrial, which is flex, where it will be kind of a, a mix of office and industrial. So think of, you know, I don't know, like, a, um, to think of a, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, really yeah, this, yeah, technically, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is, yeah. Um, but, you know, maybe it's like a plumbing company where they've got a little front office where, you know, the, the, the accounts payable people are sitting in offices up front and they've got a warehouse in the back for all of their parts and materials and their trucks, that's flex. So it's it's really a subset of industrial. And you can specialize in each one of these segments. We we many of our brokers are specially specialists in different segments of this. 
So if you're talking to your clients and they're like one of the most common um, questions I would get asked as a designated broker, I don't know if you, Kelly, you know, the same thing was about the, the land, mm -hmm. you know, um, grammar or aunt or somebody has 20 acres there and, you know, and it's like, oh, we have 20 acres now we need to know what to do with because, you know, they're not making land anymore. So mm -hmm. it's worth a lot. And my response is always, they're, you're right, they're not making land. But they are making permits and they're making <laughs> impact fees and they're making all kinds of things that impact the value of that land. So, yeah. And uh, then another way to look at this is if it takes a special loan, it's commercial. Yeah. It takes a special loan. So I have land listed, it's 47 acres, our rural farm forest, that's residential. We can sell that, right? Because it's a farm. Mm -hmm. It's like if you sold a horse property. But if it had an element to it that was zoned for multifamily, like say part of it was zoned for it had an overlay, part of it was zoned for multifamily or commercial, it's not your bailiwick. You wouldn't even know how to price it. And that throws it into the commercial. And lenders that do residential won't loan on it if it has the commercial zoning. And the other side of this uh, clarify is that it's uh, for multifamily, it's five units and up, right? Because you can borrow FHA, VA, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac up to four units. That's our world, duplexes, threeplexes, fourplexes. But once you go to a fiveplex, you've got to get a different loan. Those, those won't touch it because now it's multifamily. So that's basically another way to look at it, right? And I would say with, so when you're thinking of large tracts of land, that could still be even with a, a, a farm use, a farm zoning, yeah. that could still potentially be a commercial opportunity. Like I was just help, I was just working with a buyer who actually wanted, he's going to do something with, um, he's basically like an agricultural um, hedge fund guy. It doesn't really matter what he does. But uh, the, the, the point is um, there was like 600 600 acres or so that was primarily zoned as uh, farm use in Clackamas County. But for him, this wasn't going to be, I'm going to build a home on it. This was going to be a financial opportunity for him to plant crops. So even a, a farm zone property could still be. Yeah, if it's a business, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, go ahead. And the way the property is zoned, whatever it is, is going to determine how much value there really is mm -hmm. in it. Because that affects the analysis of that buyer or that investor. That yeah, as, as a matter of fact, the owner of the 47 acres that I have listed said, I think that this is ultimately either going to be a, a vineyard business where someone's going to put a tasting room on that, you know, they all have that dream and they're trying to sell their property. And he said, I'd like to have a commercial agent involved. So actually, Cameron and I are sharing it because Cameron has, has a co star in LoopNet. His vertical email and Crexy and all the other things, and I have it in the MLS. And we might, in fact, get a buyer that says, because the next door neighbor put a vineyard on his, you know, I want to have this as an additional bridal or something to complement my business, and I'm going to put facilities up here of some kind. So it does start to turn into a business, and it's not residential anymore. So, so quick question: If so should I look at these segments as kind of like almost like different areas for like for the direct correlation between residential? Like, should I look at these different segments as like I work this part of town, I'm a specialist in this kind of part of town? Is that a fair like I yeah, yeah, uh, you can you can because you can farm like once once you know, and I, I think I have a slide in here that talks about if um like we have one of our agents who um has restaurant experience and has decided that working with restaurants and businesses would be you know, a, a good thing for her. So then that way it focuses, right? When you niche down, mm -hmm. it focuses your attention on where you spend both your time and your money and discovering what's happening within that market so that you can expand out. Wow. And so just like you're going to focus on a neighborhood and I'm going to farm this area, it could be demographic or geographic area, you're focusing your efforts now, it doesn't mean that somebody who has a house across the town, you know, that you wouldn't be able to help them. Just like with this, when you focus down on your efforts, if somebody comes with something else, doesn't mean you can't help them. 
right? I think yeah. that's the biggest thing with the team as I've met with each of them is like, you know, they're like, as every single agent, when I talk about niche and they're like, I don't want to give up business. You won't, you'll actually get more business because your focus will be, people will know who you are, what you stand for, and there'll be a clearer message. So that's what, that's what happens with that. And then two, it's, there's so, there's like, there's so much to know in each one of these segments that, you know, when you're like, when you market to everybody, you market to nobody. So it just, the purpose of these slides and this today is to know that there are different segments. And with each one of these, there's a plethora of information that could just, you know, even as a specialist who does this day in and day out could like bury them, you know, right? So it's just enough to know how to have the conversation to identify the need so that you can confidently say, yes, I can help you. Let me set you up with somebody who I know is a specialist in that area. Cool. So it's a lot more common in our world to co-broker. So I co-broker with probably 50% of the deals that I do, whether that's cross state lines or even within the state that we're in. I approach Ramona. She's from Vancouver, does a lot of work in Vancouver. We were pitching one of the big development ground floor retail leasing spots. And so we partnered on a pitch for to the spring senior living for that. So it's a lot more common for us to share. And that's one of the biggest things that on the commercial side is collaboration is really key. Oftentimes when I hear from the residential side is it's a money conversation where they're like, oh, I don't want to give up commission. I need this commission to, to live. And there's an old adage is that, you know, I'm just going to like a 70, 30 foot or 70, 20, you know, whatever that is, but a percentage of something is better than hundred percent of nothing. Right. So it takes a lot to get these transactions to the finish line. It's not like, oh, we're going to have our inspection and we'll have our, you know, finance and it'll be done in 30 days and we're walking away from the closing table. <laughs> I just had one fall out of contract after a year and four months. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, I, I'll say that another another opportunity that I, I see quite often from re residential agents would be in the, um, I guess, business side of things where, you know, it's a smaller company, say it's a, um, we had one, it was a consignment clothing store. She owned the building, ran her business. She wanted to sell all of it, you know, or the restaurant or the mechanic, you know, who I, I own the little shop and the land and, but I want to sell it all together, you know? And so, you know, that can get really complicated, um, you know, and stuff. So that's, you know, an, an agent was like, oh, because it's an old house that was converted to commercial. Gosh, I can, I can value that out. I can figure that out. But it, th there are more com complexities that come in even in that scenario so it's it it helps to get somebody on the team to call and we'll help determine like you know oh gosh maybe this is something we can help you do or we can partner together or we need to get it off to one of the specialists mostly it's probably getting it off to one of the specialists because yeah. there's complexities yeah. within that so okay as a quick note if we're yeah. if, if you're approached by someone asking you to sell their business we can only help if there is a piece of property involved with that. We don't sell businesses by themselves. Or True, lease yeah. with interest, technically. Was that? Yeah. Or, or lease, lease, okay. or yeah. lease, lease yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So how is commercial different than residential real estate? Um, so the people, where well, you guys have buyers and sellers, right? It's, um, we don't do property management here. So we're not talking leasing. On um, commercial side, there is leasing. Um, Keith specializes in that. So the people on commercial would be investment groups, um, REITs, pension funds, bank advisors, CEOs or heads of corporations, um, private investors, developers. Anybody else? Um, yeah, yeah, that's, I think, yeah, that's pretty all encompassing. Okay. Um, the costs, um, you, you, there's definitely special tools. You need to be um, a, a proper commercial agent. So CoStar, LoopNet. Um, okay, so I can see it kind of like the formatting of it shifted. When it, it, yeah. it shifted. <laughs> okay. um, what other tools do you use for your commercial? Oh like, gosh, a lot. A lot, yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway. Real next, Craigslist. Yeah. It depends on what it is. Virtually new or vertically known. Thank you. Yes. Vertically known is a big one right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all things that cost money and time to learn, like you know, tech adoption is is stressful. I, I I have a tech background, and I even when I'm adopting a new tech, I feel like I'm going to blow up the system, or some, for some reason I I feel like I'm solely going to be the one that takes the whole system down. That's like this panic. I have. Um, 
anyway, so, and then financials, like, you know, it's like, oh, are you pre-approved for a loan? Well, on the commercial side, that conversation looks much different because instead of a mortgage company, I mean, there are real estate mortgages, but you could be dealing with, um, you know, it's it, going through an SBA process. Like that's one thing. Um, investors. Um, yeah, don't underestimate the SBA process. I had one go through in a matter of a few weeks one time. Like it was really impressive. <laughs> so, I, I, but it's, I, yeah, SBA loans are a nightmare. Actually, on the drive here to the office, I was on the phone with my client. It was a deal that took a year to close. By the way, when you do a lease, um, you get your commission is usually split in two. And so it took a year for me to get fully paid. And now the deal's done and the client is actually in the space, fully operational. But there's a problem between the general contractor not being paid and the bank that controls the funds. And this thing is about to blow up. And the developer involved looped me in on an email and said, hey, Keith, maybe you want to talk to your client because you would hate to have to refund your commission, which I don't even know if that's a thing. I don't even know if that's a thing. Because I know it's never good. But anyway, so these things, they have long arms and they never end, even when you think it's ending. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So the closing okay. process, right? It, <laughs> it can be very lengthy. Um, you know, even 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 when I was talking about before, just a small, it was a house that was converted into commercial, seemed like a pretty slam dunk. And there was still a lot that went through. It was it took quite a few months to, to close it. So um, viability, is it a good market to be in? I mean, that's one of, that's one of the questions that I, I get asked is, well, gosh, you know, especially in downtown Portland, like everybody's leaving all the buildings, like commercial is going to go like bottom down. So I don't know, what, you, what are your take about that? <laughs> it's like- There's um, no one answer. Yeah. It's so nuanced right now. There's a lot of commercial real estate that's doing really well and a lot that's average and a lot that's not doing well. Yeah, the forecaster I just heard had very positive things to say. So, um, you know, it, it's even for office space, um, it seemed very positive. You know, the, the, the thought was like, we'll turn it all into multifamily housing. And the estimates is like only about 10% of that could actually be used for multifamily housing. Um, the rest of it, um, there is still a demand and, and growth that's coming. So, um, but the $20.7 trillion of, uh, commercial real estate like in the that's that's a huge market to work in um and every business every you know viable corporation has some type of real estate holding um you know that's that's why places like um wsu uh psu they have real estate class that they provide um you know stuff so one thing that <laughs> came to mind i don't want to forget that when you're looking to uncover opportunities with clients it's much easier for commercial real estate agents to transact business over state lines. So if somebody, you know, they, they own a company or they want to invest, but they don't really like the idea, you know, and when I say invest, buy some commercial real estate for passive income tax benefits. Um, if they want to look in other states, we as commercial brokers can transact business. It's easy to affiliate with a local broker in that state. Um, there are different mechanisms in place that allow us to lawfully transact business over state lines. So don't think that you're confined just to Oregon or just Washington. Yeah, that so. is a very good point. Yeah, especially with the migration going on, you know, people in many different states and areas. So, um, yeah, don't hesitate on any of that to always reach out. So, um, you know, and interestingly enough, I, I, there's some statistical data to show that commercial real estate investment can be more stable than residential real estate investment. However, the slides, um, and when I get those, the slides showing today um, in, in that real estate investment is still a very strong market and will be for, for many years to come. And, and the projection is interest rates are going to come down. So we have been doing that, but the statistics today was like, it looked really good. So um, anyway, so yeah, pick a spe specialty was the... Um, yeah, so next slide. Um, so what do commercial agents do? I think if you could, I think I have like, I do, I have. <laughs> yeah. um, hold or sell investment, um, you know, like the analyzed properties. Should you sell right now? Should you buy? What is a 1031 exchange of that looks like? You know, right, you're, it's not always about just getting the property listed, but what does that lo holding look like? Um, property management leasing. You do quite a bit of leasing. leasing. Mm -hmm um property sale and marketing just like that um 
cash flow analysis, looking at what the um, return on, on investment, there's another term within that too, but, um, uh, feasibility studies. Like that's a big one. So, you know, th this specifically for the land, you know, is it feasible, instead of an inspection, it's feasibility. It, does it feasible to do what we want to do or the buyers to do what they want to do with that land? Environmental studies and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, they help with exchange opportunities. I'm going to sell this property to avoid, or I'm going to avoid taxes, but, you know, to offset taxes by this property. What does that process look like? Um, and a lot of lead generating. That's, um, yeah. A lot of that so some overlap definitely yeah. some overlap sure how do you lead you talk with business owners probably my most common talk with re residential agents like yourself yeah and i think it, it you know there are different ways i mean you could reach out you know directly to businesses I also like to develop strategic relationships, you know, maybe it's an accountant or an attorney, right? So that you, again, it's still kind of like a referral stream so that you have uh, some people that, you know, are dealing with their clients. And whenever the question gets asked, hey, I, I need to buy this or I want to sell that, you know, you want them, you want to be top of mind for that referral partner. So I try to spend a lot of my time cultivating those kinds of relationships. So I have a number of feeder um, verticals. Probably over 90% of my business is referrals and repeat mm -hmm. customers. Yep. And the only, I'm not a social media person. The only one I utilize really is LinkedIn. And I find that, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm more likely to find um, a client or a lead for, for a client through LinkedIn than I am Facebook, but that's just my own personal sense. bias. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, so discovery questions, like when you have a client, you know, so, or relatives, you know, somebody says to you, oh, I, you know, I've got this commercial or property or I'm thinking of purchasing one. Here are some questions that you could ask so that, you know, you, you sound confident and, you know, can, can push the conversation forward. Some of these are actually going to sound pretty similar to what you ask in, in residential side. And there's probably a ton of other questions you could ask too. These are just a few. So, you know, what kind of commercial property do you have? Um, you know, what's the size? Um, where's it located? Um, what's the condition? You know, um, there's there's different there's different construction things to in commercial. Um, yet, if they've had deferred maintenance, you know, they haven't done the tar on the roof for different things. Uh, the elevators aren't updated. You know, there's just a, there's a ton of different things that go along with that. But um, for the initial conversation, you don't need anything specific. As you'll notice, yeah. a lot of this stuff is what you could ask about a residential property as well. So it's really just the confidence to ask the question and then loop in someone else to have that conversation either with you or even, you know, a lot of my residential agents now just text me the number or text my contact info information to them and then they call me directly. So there are a lot of different ways to do it, but a lot of that is, you know, size is it occupied, you know, the basics really help why? at least with why? me yeah, and preparing yeah. for it. Um, address yeah, is always helpful for preparing. Yeah. So. yeah, just, these are just enough questions to when somebody says to you, you know, I've got this building or I want this building. You can ask just a couple of follow-up questions to to get them engaged in the conversation so that you can say, oh, that sounds like the great, that's a great plan. Let me connect you to a specialist who works in that in that field, right? It's, you know, none of these are to like deep dive and to, you know, get you into this bunny trail where you're like, you know, deer on the headlight at a point where I don't know what to say next, um, but well, just to keep I, them in, yeah. So Ramona's role is to be kind of the tip of the sphere here so that if you don't know who to ask, just call Ramona or text Ramona so that she can, because it's her role to understand what our agents are doing and what they what they want to do and what they're good at. And so it's her role to help you find the right agent for your situation. Yeah. So if you don't have one, just text her, email Ramona, call Ramona. Yeah. I have a slide for that coming up too. Oh, okay. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so next slide. <laughs> um, so possible clientele for commercial property. Look, I, I did graphics. I was kind of <laughs> when they came through. Um, 
So real estate investors, you know, people looking for, um, you know, additional long-term streams of income, you know, or maybe they want a land bank or, you know, they, they just have some kind of goal, like, you know, somebody um, interested in that. Um, business owners seeking to purchase or sell their, their property instead of leasing. Yeah, it could yeah. be, yeah, business, it could be either. Sometimes, yeah, they, sometimes they want to lease, sometimes they want to own, or sometimes they want to switch. They might own and they might want to sell it off and get a big chunk of capital yeah. and just lease it back. Yeah, because sometimes it's the, the depreciation of that building. They, they've met that depreciation factor. So they want to sell that lease for a while. You know, there, there's, a, there's a ton of different reasons what they would could be doing. Um, developers looking for new commercial properties or redevelop existing ones. So um, yeah, developers are always looking for dirt. You know, even at, at um, Mega Camp, they had T-shirts Gary put out by dirt. You know, um, institutional investors like pension funds, insurance companies, and REITs. But okay, foreign investors seeking to diversify their portfolios. Do you work with foreign investors? If you like to? Um, I I would like to. I, I have some opportunities I'm working on where hopefully that will happen for the yeah. first time, but so far not yet. Yeah. yeah okay. Not much for me, but yeah. we do have someone else in our office. Yes, who has foreign investment experience. So yeah, that's, yeah. We just did exciting. a we just did a pitch to a company yesterday in Vancouver. So. Oh, very exciting! Very exciting. Yeah, it's um, and um, the U.S. market is, you know, the dollar. I don't know. There's all kinds of noise and chatter you hear out there and stuff. But um, the slides of the presentation today were really positive for the U.S. market for London. Um, so high net worth individuals um, looking for a safe and profitable, profitable investment opportunity. Yeah, stock market was fun for the last what year? I stopped looking. <laughs> I'm like, um, you know, land or real estate is, you know, pretty consistent. So private equ equity firms, um, you know, so there's, you know, there's, there's quite a few different people that you probably have context with and you know who could be looking the most common just being sorry do you mind going back the most common that i get from residential agents would be business owners depending on a variety yeah. of different sizes business owners they're looking for a new place to lease or they've outgrown their space or some they're, they're looking for a lease or a business owner that's looking to buy a property and relocate and then the third is just there are so many real estate commercial real estate investors that you probably experience as well that just are looking for opportunity. So there are dozens and dozens and dozens of buyers that are out there that are just looking for an opportunity for sure. What, what's the number one type of referral that you get from an agent? A business. Or a business. Yeah, you know a local business owner who has 5,000 square feet of warehouse and they're trying to double their size and look for a new space in the next six months and their lease is expiring. That's the most common. And for me, I, I, you know, kind of on the lower end, it's somebody who um, is, you know, wants maybe, you know, a few hundred. There's a threat, usually a threshold uh, in terms of size that a commercial agent will want to touch because if it's too small, it really won't be worth the effort. I mean, it would be like if somebody came to you on the residential side and said, I'm looking for a $200,000 condo. It, it, it doesn't really exist. And even if it does, is it something you really want to spend your, your valuable time on? Um, so for me, it tends to be somebody who's like a small business owner who is looking to buy property for the first time or lease. And so that's why I'll have to do a thorough vetting process up front to make sure that that's something I really want to take on. So usually want to see something that, you know, if it's going to be a lease, that's at least a few thousand square feet. Reason being the commission is tied to the size of the property, the rental rate, and how long that lease is. So the longer the lease, the better, the bigger the property, the better, and the higher the uh, lease rate, the better. So if somebody's coming along that's asking about, you know, renting 500 square feet of space, they're probably better off going like with a WeWork or some kind of an executive suite for the time being. Unless, of course, you uncover that this is somebody who's starting there, but has a business plan to hire 30 employees and in a few years will be in 30,000 square feet of space. Well, that might be somebody that you wanna cultivate a long-term relationship with, even though it might not pay off right away. 
Okay. And so if you uncover opportunities or you have those conversations with your, your clients in your database, um, I'm, I'm available to help out. So, um, but this is how to find business. Um, so you identify your target market and research it. So grace and commercial agents, that's what we've been talking about is what is your specialty and then researching it and going in and, you know, asking key questions as, as you know, how many of your market is there and who is it and how do you get in front of them? Um, networking and industry events, just getting out and meeting people. I, I mean, a lot of this sounds familiar, right? <laughs> on, you know, on the residential side, you know, and that's why, that's why it's like, you're going to, you're going to be out and about and you're in, like, oh, you're in real estate and, and people are going to have questions and you, you don't always know what their questions are going to be. Um, but you, I, hopefully you can see that when you're in, you're focusing on commercial and a segment, like there's, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, I, I will say that <laughs> someone who spends almost all their time around realtors, commercial realtors are a chatty group. You go to a networking event, and there's a lot of chatter between commercial agents, even more so than you expect around the, the residential ones. I think it's the collaboration you were talking about. And the ability, you know, I think in, in residential, we have a little bit more of an adversarial um, relationship with our other agents. I don't like to use that word, but we're on one side, they're on the other side. I think in commercial, there's a lot of people working together to get deals done more so. It's a big team. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, that was definitely evident in the room today, yeah. even. With, yeah. Um, you know, referrals, just asking for referrals, you know, you, you know, letting your your people know like, hey, I'm I'm here and I've got a team that can help you. So um, use us, use these guys. Um, researching the market, um, right? That's you said that research in the market, connecting to building owners, um, understanding the business world and what's happening out there and what trends. So what trends are you seeing out there? Uh, well, on the, it's a, of all the asset classes, I think in Portland, um, industrial, and, and, and maybe to a similar extent, multifamily uh, seem to be the strongest. Um, I, I'm working on an industrial deal right now. And so I've got a, I'm gonna, I'm representing both seller and buyer. And I'm really having to educate, this buyer keeps, keeps thinking that the Portland market is in the toilet and that things are tanking. But you know, when you look at the performance of the industrial market, even going back 20 years, even during periods of recession, the bottom's never really fallen out. And that's just because, you know, when you look at uh, places to park your business that have access to a port and to a major, uh, major airport, you've got, you know, Los Angeles, you've got the Bay Area, San Diego and Seattle. And Portland is the most affordable of those. So you're always going to have demand. Um, anyway, and then yeah. I think also, yeah, multifamily, I think, too, mm -hmm. um, tends to be strong. Yeah. Cap rates. There's something called cap rates. You don't need to know about that, but that's one of the metrics we use to evaluate a property and what it should be priced at. I took that slide. Depends out. on the city, depends on the asset class, the sub asset class, the location, urban in Portland's struggling right now, but suburban office is stronger. Medical office seems to be hot wherever you go. Multifamily is kind of in the last eight months has been struggling a little bit more, but People still want to place capital in multifamily, especially at the institutional level. Um, yeah. Industrial. Yeah. You can't lose an industrial. <laughs> Seeing yeah. what. Yeah. So when you uncover an opportunity and somebody says they have a question, call me. And then is what I'll do is on the next slide, Q for Austin, connect you with one of these. I, I don't think this is a, maybe. It's pretty close. Is it pretty close to everybody? Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'll connect you with one of these great brokers and they'll help you. They'll help you. They, they each have a little bit different specialty in what they do. And um, yeah, it's really been a pleasure getting to know each of them. And you have both of us up here, but then even out in the audience, we have a couple of our commercial members, Grace, who's newer to commercial, who we're working on a couple of deals with. And then Jack in the back, who's our uh, resident retail expert, works, works on that. Uh, yeah. So thank you for showing up. Yeah, Jack. You 
<laughs> yeah. Any any words that you could share? Any words of wisdom? I'm sorry. <laughs> any words of wisdom for you? <laughs> putting you, I'm putting you on the spot. Any words of wisdom for the residential agents on on the referral of commercial or you know anything we missed that you want to add? Well, appreciate the question. It, that, that's yeah. a huge question. <laughs> um, as I look at Commander Dwight, I think in the fact that <laughs> one thing you said a few moments ago is that something of something is better than something or not. Yeah. And uh, I previously worked at NEI Global in Collier's downtown. <laughs> All those things, the pandemic showed up, and I had the chance to hypnotize Dwight, and he said, come on board, and and Cameron said, no, forget it. And I I, I I find it hypnotizing Cameron as well. But it's really, I think, difficult because um, I've seen deals blow up because of the wrong person. And I think what Rowan just said, talk to her, talk to whoever, Kelly, Dwight, Jordan, and Cameron, to try to get the right person with the right attitude to work with you to get the deal done. I've seen many, I can write a book on where one of my prior colleagues tried to uh, carry all the water and try to get the listing by himself. And they didn't win the game. And so I think having a broad brush of people to go to a meeting where if it's industrial retail office, whatever the case may be, works in your favor. For example, and I'm not trying to, this is strictly an example. I was asked by First Interstate Bank at one time, at this time to look at three branches they had they went to close. And they were challenging properties. They either want to lease them or sell them. And so I was invited to the beauty contest and my competition with CBRE at that time. I decided to take two of the main partners of NEI Global, AKA, AKA North Space and Simpson with me, another chap to describe these properties and tell them what we thought and so on. The competition bought one person. And for that event, I got the listing on three properties, which turned into seven, seven zero throughout the state of Oregon and Southern Washington. It took a hell of a lot of work, but it had people to help. And so, you know, it's it's the biggest thing is work be able to work with somebody who's going to be honest with you, professional, show up in a professional manner and talk the lingo to get the job done. And so, but I mean, I know more stories than I want to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> but, after after this meeting, yeah, but, yeah. things like this. I mean, the benefit yeah. here is that from a standpoint of Keller Williams, Portland Premier, and KW Commercial, is how do we expand the brand? How do we expand KW Commercial? And at the same time, how do we all improve our net worth and having the opportunity to work with you all? Uh, or you work with us, for example, wherever it may be, any people on that slide there uh, is a chance to not only improve your friendship and your relationship with your colleagues, but also put a few more dollars in your pocket. That really has to do a whole lot. The referral fees are real. Yeah. Yes, they are. Well, just a quick comment. I know we're at time, but I really appreciate this because I want to do what's best for my client. And if my client is referring to you, I feel like I'm more valuable that way. So I really appreciate the this talk and kind of the connection. Yeah, you yeah guys, you, guys, you might be able to fake a listing out of yeah. something like that, but you can't fake this. Right. It's going to fight you. You're just going to blow it and you're not going to pay. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. The, the, the truth always comes out, they say, right? And it's like, it's so, yeah. So, and I've, I've seen like where I've had agents, you know, and they, they get so far down the line and they come in like all frustrated because, yeah. oh, I thought I could do this. And now like they've lost the client. Yeah. Right. It's, you know, so you don't want that. So thank you for yeah. that. You don't need to lose your commercial client. That was a resident yeah. client who will never be good to be able to get. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And it roads are company. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Cool. so that's, that's what I had. Thank you, Ramona. Yeah. Keith.
Cameron. Yeah, Grace, thank you both. Jack, thank you. Andrew, thank you. Thank you. Really? Have a great week. We'll see you all. Good day. Good day. Bye.